So uh, we're going to start kick off tonight with uh, this series in Proverbs. And um, I'm, I'm just going to make this statement because I have a weapon in my home, in our house, that is mighty powerful. And it can destroy and it can tear down and it's more powerful potentially than um, a high voltage taser. And I see them regularly at the police station in Bexley Heath where the uh, police use those. They're sharper than a saber. They're more explosive than a grenade because it can crush the human spirit. It can maim the heart and it can be so destructive. And it can fire many rounds of deadly bullets. Paradoxically, that same weapon can be used for peaceful purposes. And when it's used in the right way, it can restore, heal, build people up, bring hope, inspire, motivate others. What kind of crazy high-tech weapon is this? What is it? How can something so lethal and deadly, when it's unleashed, also be used as a weapon for peace, love, harmony, and reconciliation? It's also so small and compact. You don't require a license to carry it, and most people have one easily at their disposal. Many don't have a clue how to use it. And it has a habit of firing off at the wrong time and in all the wrong places. You need an incredible amount of brain power to use it well and no brain power at all to misuse it. <laughs> what is it? You might ask. Well, what does the Bible have to say about it? Because it's in the Bible and it has plenty to say about it, particularly in the book of Proverbs that we're looking at tonight. Remember, if you can quote all those Proverbs tonight, OK, those verses let me know messages and if you get it right there's some chocolates in it for you you know this is such a vital subject that we need this high-tech objects workshop manual and proverbs 18 21 says this it's the tongue and it says the tongue has the power of life and death in the message version of the bible it says words kill words give life they'll either poison or fruit. I like that. They'll either poison or they will fruit. In the King James, it says death and life is in the power of the tongue. Proverbs 12 verse 18 says reckless words pierce like a sword, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. How many marriages have been destroyed, not by adultery or unfaithfulness, but by words, lies, insults, Verbal abuse, negative, harsh criticism, constant nagging. How many churches have split, families been torn apart, people made sick by an unfettered tongue? How much human potential has been lost and talents and giftings left untapped and unused because of what? The tongue. Proverbs 15 verse 4 says the tongue that brings healing is a tree of life, but a deceitful tongue crushes the spirit. I meet some people who are so proud about their outspokenness. Have you met them? I say it as it is. I'm a straight talker. So often that means you're just rude and they're always on the attack. But one thing I've noticed is they often talk themselves out of work or they talk themselves into a doctor's surgery with heart trouble and high blood pressure and they can't understand why they have no friends and why everything keeps going pear-shaped in their lives. Proverbs 21, 23, he who guards his mouth and his tongue keeps himself from calamity. Do you want to be a calamity, Jane? <laughs> I don't think so. If you want to keep yourself from calamity, it says guard your mouth and tongue. The trouble we could spare ourselves sometimes. On the other side of the coin, so to speak, is the power of the tongue. It is not just a, it can bless others, but also we can get blessed ourselves. We can edify ourselves. Proverbs 22, 11 says, He who loves a pure heart and whose speech is gracious, gracious, will have the king for his friend or a prime minister or a president or people of influence and power. Do you see? Do you want to be granted favour? Do you want doors of opportunity to open for you to be the head and not the tail and have influence and be at the top and not at the bottom? get promotion at work, have an influence in your community for good, then let your speech be gracious. The word in the Greek is krestos. 
and it's an attribute of Jesus Christ. Jesus says that from the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. Proverbs 12, 14 says, from the fruit of his lips, a man is filled with good things. And that fruit has to be the fruit of the Holy Spirit, the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Without the help and the love and the power of the Holy Spirit, we will always struggle with controlling our tongue. You know, and if you're someone who's come, come to Christ and you, you've had a, a habit of swearing for years and you've been full of expletives, it's a process. But the Holy Spirit will deal with it if you surrender your tongue to him. Before I became a Christian, I, I used to be a real fool. What am I talking about? Well, I didn't know I was a fool. I was just expressing my emotions. That was my excuse. I knew my rights, particularly when I was at the wheel, when I was driving. Listen to what the Bible says about road rage or having a short fuse, okay? Proverbs twelve sixteen says, A fool shows his annoyance at once, but a prudent man overlooks an insult. A prudent man overlooks an insult. I think it was Joyce Mayer who said, you'd be crazy if you're a Christian who has problems with self-control to put a sticker on the back of your car saying, I love Jesus, or maybe an ichthus sign, you know, the sign of the fish. Because if you have a, a moment's lapse and you lose the plot and, and you get angry with someone, they're just well, it, it just discredits Christianity and it discredits the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> so Proverbs 12, 23 says the heart of fools blurt out folly. Wars have started for less, haven't they? Neighbourhood friend uh, feuds. How many feuds with neighbours? I, I spoke to a dear lady this morning. She lives on her own. She's not part of our church. She's an old friend. And she rang her brother and she just told him what she thought of him. And he was in tears. And oh, my goodness. She said, I shouldn't have said those things, should I? I said, well, no, let the dust settle and then ring him tomorrow and just just say, I'm sorry, I was wrong and and make up with him. It's Christmas is coming and he's on his own. You're on your own. It's time to sort this out. Proverbs 15 verse one says a gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. How do you respond when someone insults you? intentionally or not you know in James 3 verse 7 to 12 it talks about how animals have been tamed just about every kind of animal on the planet earth has been tamed one way or another and, you know we we had a dog that was totally out of control a, a rescue dog and it was incessantly barking and howling it had to be taught boundaries and, and because it had no boundaries and I was very tough on that dog and it was boot camp for six months uh, and I gained its respect. And even though it's not perfect, it's it's so much more manageable now. It's gone from a, a total rogue to a lovable little fella. But, you know, <laughs> James 3 talks about the fact that we can tame animals. But the hardest thing to tame is, is our tongue. But we have a brilliant trainer and helper and counsellor. And he is able to sanctify you and change your language and enable you to bridle your tongue so that there is no excuse for gossip, because without gossip, a quarrel dies down. A gossip can separate close friends and destroy relationships. I just want to share a little story with you. It's a true story because a man saw at a distance his vicar hugging the wife of another church member. And he was shocked. And the first thing he did was to tell other members of the church what he had seen. Of course, just between the two of us. It, it spread like wildfire. And that Sunday, the vicar announced that one of the members of the church had suffered a terrible tragedy earlier in the week. It turned out that when the gossiping church member, what he'd seen was the vicar consoling this person's wife. He was so ashamed that he went to his vicar and confessed what he had done and asked for forgiveness, which he was granted. The vicar asked the man to do him a favour. Because he felt so guilty, he jumped at the chance. So the vicar said to him, take the feather pillar to the top of the hill in the centre of town. Tear it open and release all the feathers to the wind. Then come back to me when you have finished. The church member obliged, convinced that he knew the lesson he was being taught. When he came back to the vicar, he told him that he understood the lesson. I get it. And that gossip can spread quickly and easily. The vicar said, that is true. 
But for the most important part of the lesson, go and pick up every feather. Whoa. You know, once those words are out there, they are like exocet guided missiles and they can explode and come back in your face in the most unexpected ways and do collateral damage. What it all comes down to really is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Galatians 5 tells us that the acts of the sinful nature, the old man, well, one of them is fits of rage, another discord, another dissensions. And what do they all involve? The tongue. An untamed, unregenerate, unsanctified tongue. Proverbs 11.9 says, with his mouth, the godless destroys his neighbor. I'm going to say that again. With his t mouth, the godless destroys his neighbor. But the fruit of the spirit talks of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And you know, all of those can be expressed by the tongue. Think about that. All of the fruit can be expressed one way or another by the tongue. With the tongue, we can bless or curse. Be a fire extinguisher or a fire starter. I know what I'd rather be. And as Christians, we can use our tongues with phenomenal authority and power. The words that you and I speak determine our destiny. How we speak about ourselves and our future needs to agree with what God says about us. If you keep talking failure, if you keep talking sickness, it will be a self-fulfilling prophecy. You won't succeed and you'll be ill. But if you if you defy your emotions and speak out instead the word God speaks, you will be utterly amazed at how the scenery changes. You can either be a disaster magnet or you can be a blessing magnet. You know how your marriage changes as you speak encouraging words of appreciation and affirmation. How your financial situation and your health can change for the better and be staggeringly blessed. As you come into agreement with God's promises and what he says about you. Amen. Take every thought captive and make it obedient to Christ. Speak out with your powerful weapon, God's word, in prayer, in praise, in worship. It'll fill your heart with joy and you'll receive peace and healing. Proverbs 15.30 says, good news brings health to the bones. It brings health to the body. And we have the most brilliant news anyone could possibly receive. Speak out the healing scriptures. Speak out God's promises over your life. There's healing in God's word. Healing in God's word to us. Use your mouth to smile as well. It takes less muscles to smile than it does to frown. Did you know that? <laughs> A cheerful look brings joy to the heart. And when we speak, when you pray in agreement with God's will and his word, the enemy retreats and he'll be driven back. The spiritual warfare there. And in 2 Corinthians 10, we read that the weapons that we fight with are not the weapons of this world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. And one of the greatest weapons that you have is an inch under your nose. Have you thought about that? You know, if you put God's word on it, you can transform your world, your relationships, your health, and come into the destiny that God has for you. It's with our mouth that we receive salvation. Think about that. When you got saved, that watershed day, when you asked Jesus Christ into your heart, it was with your mouth. Romans 10 says, the word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that you are proclaiming. That if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Hallelujah. Proverbs 12, 6 says, the speech of the upright rescues them. What do you need rescuing from? Think about that. The speech of the upright rescues them because your speech will be full of wisdom. And Proverbs 14, 5, 14 verse 5 says, the lips of the wise protect them. You know, the real engine of the tongue is the heart, isn't it? That's the real engine of the tongue. And if we get our hearts right before God, then everything else will come right. Amen. Hallelujah. Shall we pray? And then we'll get uh, praying for the for the sick folk. Okay. Amen. 
Oh Lord, we pray that you'll touch our tongues tonight, touch our, our lips, Lord Jesus. Uh, just as you touch the lips and tongue of Isaiah, who decided that he had unclean lips and lived among a people of unclean lips. Lord, one of the seraphs flew to him with a live coal in his hands, which he'd taken with tongs from the altar. Uh, Lord, cause us only to speak out what will bless and encourage and, and speak in agreement with your word. Lord, as it were, touch our tongues, touch our lips with, with a coal from the altar. Lord, change our language, Lord Jesus, to, to speak and sing out and worship you and praise you and spread the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ, to build others up and to just be a blessing everywhere that we go. Amen. Uh, and Med says, you are what you speak. You are what you speak. Hallelujah. 